Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's word to you. And today is a new week. We begin and then we are continuing from what we've been sharing all month, entering into God's rest. Praise God. And, and I know the Spirit of God has a lot that He wants to communicate to your heart. Oh, last week was awesome. Praise God. Friday was wonderful. The anointing of God's Spirit was so strong and God was just doing a lot of things. Praise God. And I also appreciate your comments, your feedbacks. We do appreciate them. And I know God is going to do greater things this week. So open your heart, receive the word that is coming to you, and let it bless your soul. Let it mature you. Let it bring you and build you up and bring you into the place of inheritance in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before we go into today's broadcast, which is a continuation, I want us to make demand for our daily bread and release your faith when we do this. Join me right now as we declare, say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. God is doing wonders in your life. Now, we, 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 our main texts have been from Hebrews chapter 4. And today I want us to look at verse 10. No, verse 9, verse 9, from verse 9. I want us to look from verse 9 today. Hebrews chapter 4 and from verse 9 it says, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. For he who has entered his rest has himself also seized from his works as God did from his. Now I want you to understand something. I've, I've, I've taken time to teach from Genesis how God rested. And I say he didn't rest because he was tired. He didn't rest because he had worked so hard that he needed to take a break. No, he rested by handing off and saying, I am done. See that? He said, I am done. Now here he tells us that let for anyone who has entered his rest, has himself also ceased from his works, as God did from his. When God entered his rest, he stood back and let the word begin to manifest itself. Now, how was the word going to manifest itself? By the power of the Holy Spirit. So from the moment God rested, the Holy Spirit took over and began to do everything. I told you the same thing when Jesus finished his work, he rested. The father says, sit down. That's rest now until I make your enemies your footstool. Brothers and sisters, today, Jesus is not doing anything per se. You understand that? He's not. Don't think, oh, I prayed and Jesus. You know, sometimes people have had experiences and they say, Jesus walked into my room. And he communicated this. He told me this. Now, that's not Jesus. Jesus didn't leave his throne. You see what I'm saying? To come here to meet you. That was the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit is one. The Holy Spirit is one who can. He, hey, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hey, you know, you know let, me, let, me, let me just share this with you so it will help some of you. I've heard people say things like, and sometimes preachers, not mainly preachers, yeah. I heard people say things like, Paul appeared to me and shared some things, you know, with me. Now, I put, let me just put you on notice. That wasn't Paul. That wasn't Paul. You see? Why? Why did you say that wasn't Paul? Because Paul is dead. Now, people who are dead cannot appear to you. I'm saying this for a reason. Now, Jesus had an experience at the Mount of Transfiguration. 
And who are the people that appeared to him? Moses and Elijah. Now take note that these two people, there is no evidence of their deaths. Elijah was taken up to heaven by a chariot. Moses, the Bible says, God told him to go up the mountain and die there. Now I'll tell you the truth, God didn't really say go die there. It was the translators that wrote that. The truth is, there is no evidence that Moses died. And but the Bible said God buried him. Where did God bury him? Can you point out the place where God buried him? See that? So what happened to Moses by revelation is this. Moses was taken up into heaven. Now that's why he was able to show. Now look at Moses, Elijah. We have evidence from scriptures that he was taken up into heaven. See that? Now for him to now appear with Moses... On, on the Mount of Transfiguration and they were conversing with Jesus, you know that they must have come from the same place. You see that? Now, so there is strong evidence that Moses did not die. Moses possibly was raptured. So that's the meaning of what the translator was trying to say, that like God buried him himself. He was done with his work. God says, look, let me take you out of this place. So God took him out of this place. No... You can't find Moses' body anywhere on the earth. No archaeologists have been able to trace and say, oh, this must be the body of Moses. None. It doesn't, it's not nowhere. His bones are nowhere on the earth. Praise <laughs> God. Now, that's why he appeared. Now, only the living can appear like that. Every other manifestation that people have, they are either the manifestation of the Holy Spirit or the, a demonic manifestation. Now, how do I know the difference? From the message, you will know the difference. See, I've told you this before. In truth, the way God speaks is almost the same way the devil speaks. Now, here is the reason. The reason is because of your hearing. It's not about the speaking. It's your hearing. So, the, there is only one way spirits can communicate to you. You see that? Just one channel. Now, it is you that will decipher with the knowledge that you have if this is God or if this is the devil. So, now, no, I know when Satan is speaking to me and I know when God is speaking to me. That's maturity. You can tell because you know. But if you don't know him, if you don't know the Lord, you will know, you will take what he has told you. Or sometimes, you see, you know, now, now listen, listen carefully to this. Sometimes we start on a topic and then I begin to look like I'm digressing a bit. No, I, I believe and I'm trusting the Holy Spirit to guide, guide us as we flow. Now, there are, there are people who love uh, anytime they, they hear anything they sense is from the Spirit. They are quick to act. Now, if you're that kind of a person, I want to teach you something. In as much as it's good to always act quickly when you know that God is telling you to act, you must also understand the difference between um, a word that should make you act or a word that is for your information. This is the reason. If Satan knows that once you get something from the Spirit, you will act on it, He's found a way to trap you. Remember what Jesus said about the man who's led by this, who's born of the Spirit. He's like the wind. You never see where he's coming from. You never can tell where he's going. See, now, sometimes the Holy Spirit would, would, would reveal things to come to you. Not because he's telling you to take a quick action now, now, now. You see that? Now, for example, the Lord can speak to you and tell you, look, you will resign from your job. He's not telling you, go and resign tomorrow. He's just giving you an inside information. You see that? Now, the reason for your resignation will come. But then, there are people who will just hear, resign from your job. Yes, sir. They go and resign tomorrow. Now, you grow to a place of maturity when you've, you've really mastered his voice and you master his way of speaking. See, one is knowing his voice. Number two is knowing the way he speaks. So you grow to that point of maturity when he can tell you some things. But 
There are lots of people who make this mistake. They've not grown to that place of maturity yet. And they are walking somewhere and then they hear, you resign from your job. The following day, they put on the application, put in the appli their resignation. Why are you resigning? No, um, I, I, I just have to go somewhere else. And then they are gone. Now, if you're that kind of a person and you don't grow into maturity quick, Satan will begin to take advantage of your life. He, he knows what to do. All he needs to do is to appear to you as the angel of light. That's what scripture says. You get into a place of blessing, he will interrupt it. You get into this something good, he will interrupt. You get into a good relationship, he will interrupt it. All he knows, all he knows is to throw a vision to you or to throw a voice at you. You see that now? But when you learn maturity is when you begin to learn to prove all things. See that? So now the Lord tells you, you resign from your job. You say, wow, thank you, sir. Okay, sir. And one thing about working with God is this. Please write this down and it's for your good. Patience. There is no one who will ever work with God and will not learn patience. If you don't learn patience, you will make blunders along the way. So now you hear the Lord tell you, you resign from your job. Now, he didn't tell you resign now. You need to find out from him, when should I resign? And he may not say anything. Now, if he doesn't say anything, relax. Continue doing your job faithfully. Don't go there and say, after all, God told me I will resign. So you start becoming a tramp. You know, you start behaving anyhow. Start taking your work. Start behaving unserious towards your job. That is wrong. And realize this about the, the, the Spirit of God. Every instruction He gives to you will reveal your character. Even God sometimes gives you instruction to see how you are going to react in those circumstances. I'm telling you the truth. Because... God is still looking out for your character. Someone says, God knows my character. No, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't. Praise God. He learns from you. Praise God. Yeah, I'm telling you this too. God learns from you the way you respond. That's the reason God will give Abraham an instruction. He will obey and God will say, now I know that you love me. Now, he's omniscient. How come he didn't know that Abraham loved? Why did he have to test? That's how God is. He's not going to judge you from the place of knowledge. You know what I mean? I know everything. No, no, no. He's going to judge you from the place of experience. You see that? So sometimes God will tell you, resign from your job. And he's watching to see what you're going to do. Has character been built in you? Now, character will tell you, Lord, these people have been good to me. I can't just resign like that. No, Lord, according to our policy, I need to give them one month notice. I need to state why I'm resigning. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, you are revealing to the Lord that you're a principled person. And soon, angels, because they sometimes, I come on now. That's another angle to the whole story. You see, sometimes angels relate with us. They come with our assignments. But they learn how to relate with us by our character. You see that? So now God begins to see in you that you're a very principled person. Now he begins to deal with you and relate with you in that light. See that? So God tells you resign. I'm like, oh, okay, Lord. I'm waiting. You've already carried the information in your heart that there is, uh, you will soon stop walking in that place. So you're flowing and you're walking. Then suddenly, maybe a few months down the line, you begin to see some movements. You begin to see some reactions. You begin to see the way people begin to behave, like they are hush, hush, you know, hiding things from you. And you're wondering, okay, what's going on here? See that? And then you, maybe you ask, what's going on here? And say, um, you know, there is a... Uh, there's, there's, there we're having some bit of a challenge that we cannot pay every staff. So we're just thinking what to do. So, so, so what are you planning to do? We're planning to downsize and things like that. I said, oh, okay. I, I think I, I can opt to leave. Now, at that moment, you're saying that because 
you have inside information already. Now you have flowed until you've gotten to that point where it is needed. What I'm sharing with you now will really benefit you. There are people who have cut off relationships because they say God said they should cut off that relationship. And years later, they begin to wonder why they cut off that relationship. You see, because every decision you take, a day is going to come when you're going to account to yourself about that decision. So you better know the reason you're taking that decision. God can tell you somebody is a thief. It doesn't mean you begin to treat that person. You can't go and arrest that person. Maybe you're even a police officer and you, you, you've learned to walk by the Spirit of God. And then God speaks to you and says, see that person over there? He said, yes, Lord, he's a thief. You can't go to the, walk up to the person and say, you're under arrest because you're a thief. And then I say, brother, God spoke to me that he's a thief. And I arrested. He's just telling you, put your eye on that person. And just watch that person. He is going to manifest as a thief. Then when you arrest him, you're arresting him because of what he stole. You can't go to court and say, the Spirit of God told me he was a thief. That's why I arrested him. Now, that's the same way you, are, you, you handle, especially relationships. Now, relationships with people in terms of um, uh, marriage, uh, dating, employment relationship, business relationship, and, and several things. You can, you can be doing business with somebody and the Lord will say that person is not an honest person. Inside information. But don't take a decision, a quick decision based on that. Now, you can take decisions in limiting how you invest your money in that person. You understand? But don't cut off from that person and say, because the Holy Spirit told me that that person was not an, an honest person. He's giving you inside information. It will help you conduct yourself. But give the person time to manifest who they are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when they manifest who they are, you know, I said, I'm taking this decision because of this action of yours and this action of yours. But then you know in your heart you're taking the right decision and you're not going to regret it tomorrow. You see, because the truth is this, the person can change tomorrow. And then you begin to tell yourself, I wish I had given that person more than, no, sir. You judge based on what happened that day, even though you've already received inside information about the situation. So you give right judgment that is true. See that now. But you don't jump at people because of Oh, the Holy Spirit told me something. The Holy Spirit told me something about you. Please learn that today. I hear me. Learn that today. Hear him, but always walk by patience and let him prove, let people prove themselves. Your final decision when it concerns people should be according to how they have proved themselves. Praise God. My time is up for today. Hey. We are talking about entering God's rest. Even in relationship, there is rest in for that purpose. I'll see you tomorrow. Have the best week ever. Bye-bye.